guys, so let's have a chat about hyaluronic acid and what it is, how it's used in skincare, how you shouldn't use it in skincare, clear up misbeliefs, anything and everything, I'll answer questions if you got them. Let's talk about it. So, hyaluronic acid, you have almost definitely heard this term thrown around when referring to skincare, sometimes lip products, there's even supplements of the stuff, but what is it? So hyaluronin is something that your body naturally creates, it's mostly in your skin, your eyes, and your connective tissues, and your joints, but um, for the sake of this, we're talking about it topically for the skin. So what hyaluronin does, it helps bind water to collagen so that it helps plump your skin up, it helps it look younger, helps reduce the appearance of fine lines, helps retain moisture. It is honestly really good stuff when it is used correctly. Here's the thing, a lot of people don't know how to use it correctly and then they're shocked when they have an adverse reaction to it. So honestly, this should be talked about. First off, practically, like, Anything in your skincare arsenal, if you look at it, there's a good chance it may contain this ingredient. And there's like two camps of thought here. There's the ones who believe that it's so magical it should be in all of the things all of the time. And there's the people who villainize it, and there's very little in between. There's like no room for nuance here. It's just like, okay, both of you, dial it down a little towards the middle. So, when... Hyaluronic acid is used correctly, it does in fact hold on to moisture from your environment, from your other skincare products. It is wonderful. And the problem is, I've seen so many people here on YouTube talking about different ways they use it that don't necessarily align with the best ways of how you should be using it. So, with a hyaluronic acid, when you're using it as a serum, like, this is nothing fancy, this is literally just Art Naturals, it's what I happen to have on hand right now, but I think I have others, but it was what was closest and what I found first, regardless. So, a lot of people just assume it's like any serum, you just wipe it on and go. But, first problem, a lot of people don't give their serums adequate time to absorb into their skin before they put on anything over it, and that already is a problem. Because if you don't give it time to fully sink into your skin before applying anything like a moisturizer or anything else on top of it, you're not going to get those benefits out of the product that it was intended to give you. It's going to cancel it out. But in the case of hyaluronic acid, okay, let's say you did in fact leave it on long enough and it fully absorbed and you didn't do anything else. If you live in a humid climate, you might be okay with that. If you live anywhere else, <laughs> on the other hand, uh, you'll probably find you have an adverse reaction to it. Because one thing that I can compare hyaluronic acid to which is a humectant. A humectant literally pulls moisture from its surroundings into it. And hyaluronic acid, it's debatable whether or not the claims are true that it holds 1,000 times its molecular weight, but it definitely holds a lot. It's just debatable how much for certain because testing is really tricky with this topic. If you try and research it, you'll find that, yeah, it's kind of shady answers that you get here, there, and everywhere, so. But it definitely does pull moisture into it, and it's definitely helpful. However, like I said, I compare it to a silica gel packet. Now, a silica gel packet isn't a humectant exactly, it's a desiccant, so it'll pull moisture out of its surroundings and into it, and that's just that. But with a humectant, it'll also do that. But if you don't seal in that moisture, that moisture is then later going to evaporate back out and leave you drier than you were going in. So if you were to not live in a humid climate and you were to not put anything else on over your serum and you put this on, guess what's gonna happen? Your skin's gonna dry out 
and then you're gonna just assume that hyaluronic acid's bad and that it doesn't play nice with your system, and... I mean, I can see where people draw this conclusion. I can, really, truly. But that's not it. I mean, what you need to do when you use any type of hyaluronic acid, you need to seal it in with moisture. You need to seal it in with an occlusive moisturizer, preferably a moisturizing cream over it. It can be all different types, but I know that a lot of people, as much as you don't want to hear it, they do recommend silicones as, like, the high end of really sealing it in there. But honestly, you can use any moisturizer over it, and you'll be good to go. That's all you need to do. It's like one extra step. It's not that hard to remember. But here's the thing. If you don't do that, you're gonna have that reaction to it if you don't live in a humid climate. If you live in a humid climate, it'll keep pulling moisture from the surrounding air and you'll be okay because there is the moisture. But if you don't, and you don't have that occlusive layer on your skin, then after it's pulled everything in, it's gonna let it back out. Now, it's not gonna, like, make your face look wet because it let back out. No, it's going to evaporate, and that's going to be that. And that sucks, because it shouldn't have to be that way. And honestly, the labels on these things should be more clear about that. Like, even this one, the instructions that come with it are not clear about that. I will show you. It comes with a little card. Every product's different, but again, this is just the one I had closest by, but it's just like... So for your morning routine, cleanse and pat dry your face, massage 5 to 10 drops of vitamin C serum onto your face, allow 3 to 5 minutes for the serum to absorb, and then follow up with 5 to 10 drops of hyaluronic serum. It mentions nothing about sealing that in with an occlusive. Anywhere. Anywhere. And yet, for their evening routine, for their retinol serum, they mentioned to follow up with a hydrating moisturizer. Why would you not mention that with the hyaluronic acid that's so important? But I find that this does extend further as well into other skincare products as well that contain hyaluronic acids, because I've seen it in lip balms, for example, that contain it, that their base ingredient for the lip balm, I'm sorry, lip balm, I should say, is not occlusive. Guess what happens? People are shocked when the product dries them out more than they were when they put it on. And some companies knowingly do that because they want to sell more products and they know that if your lips stay chapped, you're going to keep using and buying more of the product. It's a vicious cycle and they know they've got you on the hook because most people don't really question it. They just assume, wow, I just have really perpetually dry lips all of the time. I don't know why. That's why. That's why a lot of times, even with the more organic ones, I've seen it happen too. So, I mean, you just need to be careful about these things is all. But, um, it gets murkier when you get into th other types of skincare products. But, um, because most moisturizers, honestly, if it has it in it, it's like one step they've managed to mix the two together. But, I mean, other skincare products... It just, it depends on what it is. Now, other ways that I have heard people recommend doing this, of when to use it, I've heard some people say that they keep it in their shower, which, please, do not keep it in your shower. This is not a heat-stable ingredient. Do not do that. I know it's not in the dark jar. You still do not want to get this too hot. Don't do that. You're going to harm its just everything. Um, it's stability. Sorry, I was trying to think of the word. But um, I've seen people say that they keep it in there, and the second that they're done bathing, and they've dried off, but they left their face damp, and they just slap this right on, and they call it good to go. And I'm like, oh, oh, honey, no. No. <laughs> I mean, you're halfway correct. I would say if you want it in the bathroom with you after you've showered, and the room is still steamy after your shower, that's great. Don't keep it literally in the shower, though. And you still need to moisturize after. I don't care if it is steamy in that bathroom. You still need to moisturize so badly after putting it on. I've seen people recommend using facial mists before laying down a hyaluronic acid and claiming that that's going to make it good to go without a moisturizer. No. Nope. 
No, because you put it under it. And depending on the facial mist, it may not be occlusive. So even if you were to layer it on top, it may not do what you want it to do. You still need that moisture barrier there. So what have we learned today, guys? Like, hopefully, I mean, if you use it correctly, it's honestly a really simple ingredient to handle. It's very gentle. Despite it having acid in the name, it does not burn your skin. It is very rare to be truly allergic to hyaluronic acid because it is a naturally occurring substance in your body. It's like the people who claim to be allergic to salt. It's not usually the salt that they're actually allergic to. They're allergic to the iodine that's in the salt, and then they try sea salt, and they're fine. It's usually something like that when people claim that they're allergic to hyaluronic acid. It's not that exact ingredient. It was something else that was also in the product, or they're cross-reacting to something else they used at the same time. That said, because it is in so many different beauty and skincare products, it is possible to find yourself developing a sensitivity to it, especially if you weren't using it correctly in the first place. That ups the odds of that happening that much more. So I would highly suggest if you're going to throw in like a straight up hyaluronic acid serum to your routine, Go through your other ingredients that you, you use daily, look through the ingredients, see what all else has hyaluronic acid in it, and ask yourself if you really need to be adding this, because a lot of times it turns out, no, you actually don't. But then other times, depending on what you're using, other products don't have it in it, and you'll find that, okay, actually I'm not doubling, tripling, quadrupling up on this, should be fine to use it. It just, it absolutely depends on what you're specifically using at that time. I mean, if you're using it in tandem with one other thing that's got it in it, you'll probably be perfectly fine. Maybe even like two, but I mean, I wouldn't go too far beyond there, especially if you are sensitive skinned to begin with. You really don't want to keep adding more and more and more and more on top of it because that is how you kindle a sensitivity. That said, not everyone who does layer them up that way will develop a sensitivity. There's some people who will be perfectly 100% fine their entire lives, even if they used like six products at a time with it in it. That is not exactly the typical experience. Most people are not so lucky. So what to do if you do develop a sensitivity to it? Scale back your skincare routine to the absolute most bare bones essentials preferably the most simple ingredient ones where you know what's in it and very slowly introduce ingredients back in one by one until you find the culprit that was actually causing the sensitivity because it might not be this it could be something else and you're pointing the finger at the wrong thing but if it is that just avoid hyaluronic acid as best you can like give it like six months a year Maybe test something that has a very small amount in it and see if you still react. If you do, keep avoiding it. But odds are, if you wait long enough, you'll eventually reach a point where you can use it again. But if you had a past history of sensitivity to it, be very mindful of that, especially at that point. You do not want to be doubling, tripling, quadrupling up on products that all have it in it. But it does suck because so many things have it in it now that trying to find things that don't contain it actually is surprisingly difficult. Now, knock wood, this is one thing I have not firsthand experienced, but I have known people that it's happened to, and I've seen people on YouTube that it's happened to, and I've seen the fallout that happened to their skin, and it doesn't look fun. So, you know, an ounce of prevention is better than a pound of cure. So just being mindful and educated about this going in it'll work wonders for you. So, I don't know if I missed any points, if there's any questions about anything that you guys had that you'd like to ask about it, but if you have any, ask them down below. If it's something that I know the answer to, I will share it with you. If it's something that I don't, I'll try to research it and still get back to you with one, or if it's something I can't even find the answer to, then I'll let you know that too. But 
regardless that is it for this one guys so as usual you know what to do if you like this video go ahead and give it a like if you're not already and you'd like to be click subscribe hit that notification bell icon so you never miss an upload leave comments down below make sure we're <laughs> make sure you're following my social media accounts i'm not following my social media accounts you guys should though my twitter my instagram my facebook fan page my Etsy, everything and more, it's all down below, and if you like what I do here on this channel and you'd like to help support it, the donation link, as always, is down in the description. Anyway, guys, until next time, bye-bye.